All right, everybody, once again, thanks for joining us. A couple reminders before we get started with Arkansas. Um, please state your name and affiliation if you have a question, and please direct a, your questions for the student athletes to a specific student athlete. For those of you on Zoom, use the raise hand function, and we'll try to get to you as soon as we can. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach. I just thought, you know, defensively, um, we played so good. I, you know, I thought we did a great job of, of forcing turnovers, uh, 15 turnovers. You know, Gonzaga's a great passing team. They're extremely unselfish. We held them to nine assists. So that differential of assist to turnovers, uh, we felt like, you know, some things that we wanted to do defensively. I thought Trey Wade did a great job of denying and pressuring their trail man. We eliminated a lot of their high lows, which was, was extremely important for us. And uh, Adisi's uh, defense, just incredible, um, the entire game on, on their point guard. And then uh, Trey Wade's points, uh, when we desperately needed them, uh, were huge for us as well. And then Jay Will, uh, with a double-double, played incredible interior. And, and, and we actually outscored him in the paint, which was, which was one of our goals, although we did not get to the foul line as much as Maybe we had hoped to. We got to do a better job of, of drawing FTAs. All right, we'll start here in the middle with questions. Scotty Bordelon with Whole Hog Sports. Trey, I'm going to be a little nosy. Who are you on the phone with walking up on the stage? And then two, just what's the feeling of maybe having the game of your life on, on this stage? Uh, it was one of my brothers. They had called me and congratulated me. But, um, Man, it's a big stage. It's what you dream of, and you know I'm I'm happy we got it done. I'm happy I played a good game, but you know, I was on to the next one. Over to the right. This one's for Coach. Coach JB and Favel, how you doing? Big win for y'all, obviously. Um, how about just a thought in the defensive game plan? Seems like you guys stuck to it for 40 minutes and never let up the whole way through. Yeah, I thought again. This is uh, you know it's one of the fastest paced teams that I've ever seen uh, with the push of the ball, but. Uh, even this morning, we were still working on our transition defense. We wanted, we wanted to take away their long outlet passes. That was something that we picked up on film when, um, when Nebhard would get ahead of steam. And Adisi met him really, really early, way in the backcourt. And I thought that really helped. And then they do a great job of their pitch ahead sideline break. We took that away. Um, I mean, we grinded in our prep. I give these guys a ton of credit. We took a four-hour flight after traveling from Buffalo to Fayetteville for 24 hours to here, and then we went straight to, a, to an hour and 45 minute practice. Um, uh, can't compliment these guys and the entire team enough for the way that they buy into uh, game preparation. It's, it's probably the, the, the coolest thing I've ever been a part of that they just kind of do what we ask. Question on the left. Uh, yeah, for any of the players who want to ask, this is Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. Did you sense your defense frustrating them in terms of pace of play and just getting in their way the whole time? Uh, yeah, I feel like Trey Wade did a good job of pressuring that trail, man, like Coach said, taking them up out of a lot of stuff that they like to do. And then a DC just on them hard, picking them up early, uh, slowing them down a little bit. I think they got a little frustrated. Question in the middle? Uh, Travis Green, Crim2 News. Yesterday, Coach spoke with us and said how he was going to show you guys clips of essentially the disrespect you were getting heading into this game, being the underdogs. Um, just want to know from your, the player's perspective, what kind of role did that play in this year, just giving you guys maybe a little feel heading into this game? Um, yeah, I think we've been d disrespected the whole year, so it's just another thing for us. I'm, they gave them like an 86% chance to win. So we saw that. We saw everything they were saying. We felt like they were dancing before the game. That, that was disrespect to us. So we just came into the game playing hard. And we had a chip on our shoulder every game we do. And we just played hard for, for 40 minutes. So that's just, that's just what we do now. Bob on the left. Hey, hey guys, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat is that Maybe this uh, Ibichi could take this. Um, this is the first time Arkansas has ever knocked off a number one seed in, in the 11th time, you know, 11th try. How big was that? And, you know, you know, Gonzaga was a heavy favorite. Just how does it feel to, to beat, you know, the number one overall seed? Uh, this is what we dreamed about. Um, this is what we came here to do. Uh, Coach said before we left Fayetteville, if we ain't want to win, then don't get on the plane. So I feel like we brought that the whole time we're here. <clears throat> yeah, you want us to answer? Yeah, about you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, being an underdog, man, I, you just use it to your advantage. They never see you coming. And, you know, we just came out and played balls to the wall and we got it done. So. 
<laughs> All right, question in the middle. Hey, Jalen, Todd Richardson, ESPN, Arkansas. You've had a chance to go up against Oscar Shibwe, Colin Castleton, two other great players tonight. How much do you think going up against those guys earlier in the season prepared you for this matchup against Holmgren and Timmy tonight? Um, for sure, it prepared me a lot. I said this earlier in the year. I feel like every time I played against a big, it prepared me for the next one we were playing. So playing against those great bigs in SEC uh, just prepared us for tonight. We saw a lot of the same things that they did during SEC, but we've been versing good bigs the whole year. So it was just another game for us. Back to the left. Jim Meehan from the Spokesman, or you for Eric. Uh, Andrew's very rarely been locked down like he was tonight. What was the key for what Tony did with him and, and maybe uh, as well on the bigs? He did a nice job on their bigs. Yeah, I mean, I, we were fortunate enough. Um, you know, we, we, played, uh, we played Andrew when he was at Flo uh, Florida, and, and I mean, we were at Nevada. And uh, we didn't do a good enough job of pressuring him and, and being physical. Um, and then we played him, obviously, uh, you know, my first year at Arkansas, and, and I thought he did a really good job against us. I went back and watched all of his clips um, from those two games because obviously we have the same system in, but we have different <coughs> personnel. Um, and certainly the job that Adis did, because we had a really tough decision because JD's a really good defender too and a high steel player, uh, but we felt like that cross match uh, might benefit us. Um, I was a little worried about matching up that way and then the transition game. Um, and then inside, I mean, we just wanted to be physical, um, plain and simple. We, we wanted them to feel bodies. Um, I mean, I played in that league. I know what some of the teams are like in that league and, and the physicality and the speed that, that we can play with um, is just different. Um, and obviously they played a really tough schedule um, early in the season, but it's been a long time um, in conference play since they faced a team like us. And um, we weren't going to back down, I can tell you that, inside. When we took away their threes, I, you know, I thought it was as good as we could play against a really, really great team that's extremely well coached. Next question in the middle. Curtis Wilkerson with Hog Sports. This question's for maybe JD and Jalen. Uh, you guys have now matched the run that you made last year to the Elite Eight. How much of a motivating factor was it for you in the offseason during the year to get back to this point and, and then what's the hunger level to move on from here um yeah so the whole time that when the new guys came in we preached to them like the the bottom is us getting to the lead eight, and that's what we want to do the whole time that's what we are working toward and of course we're still hungry to keep achieving higher than what what the expectations were but we're just going to keep playing hard um we set the standard for ourselves to to keep going up so that's what we're going to do uh and just Piggyback off what Jalen said, um, we knew we was going to have another great chance to uh, make a run again. We just had to stick together and just keep playing hard. Question on the left. Uh, Steve Sullivan with KTV. <coughs> and Coach, uh, I thought JD's 9 for 29 was the best offensive performance I've ever seen. The way you trusted him, put the ball in his hands, I don't think they dealt with it the whole game. I mean, and uh, it was just impressive to see you just attack, attack, attack. No, thanks, Sully. He only took 29 shots. Um, I mean, we trust. I'm a, you know, I'm going to roll with the guys that, that, that have done it all year. You know, um, he could have missed 10 more shots, and I probably would have still called his number because I have that belief that the next one's going in. So do his teammates. I do think that we did a really good job uh, of, of c finding cutters at really opportunistic times. They really, really loaded up on J.D. Uh, Devo had a great pass uh, to a cutter. Uh, Adis had a great slash. Um, and then, you know, we needed to play through Jay Will when things kind of got discombobulated uh, with JD out there, you know, handling it and then sending an extra defender. And then, obviously, you know, Trey makes those shots in practice. I mean, he, he's, he's a lethal three point shooter with his feet set, and, and they sloughed off and helped and overhelped off of him. And he did a great job of shooting the ball with great confidence. Question up to the right. Uh, this is for the three players. This is Mark Cannizzaro from the New York Post. I'm just curious what, um, you know, obviously Eric brought you guys around town a little bit yesterday. You kind of embraced the city. You did the same thing in Buffalo. What does that do for you guys in terms of keeping you guys loose at all? And is that a factor on the, on the court? Um, <clears throat> just give us a little freedom, you know, get our mind off basketball and just go out and just explore the city. We ne I've never been here, so I mean, it's kind of nice to go see it. 
basically what he said, just getting a little free time to kind of be around your teammates and not talk about basketball, it, it, I think it's good for us. Question on the left. I mean, two two part for Jalen. Um, you set the season rebound record tonight. Beat beat the Derek Hood is an awesome rebounder for his career. Uh, and just wonder what you think about setting the season rebound record. And then, you know, Holmgren. He only played 23 minutes, and he had still had 11 points and 14 boards. How big was it to get him in foul trouble where he couldn't? You know, you you limited what he could do, obviously. Yeah, I'm thankful that I did that. Of course, just growing up here, just being, or growing up in Arkansas, just. Watching it my whole life, now I'm like I'm considered one of the, the ones that people are gonna look and see rebounds. Like that's that's what I'm gonna be remembered for. But also getting Chet in foul trouble, that was one of the big things for us. We we wanted to keep driving at him. We wanted JD to play aggressive. We wanted our guards to keep driving at him. And getting him in foul trouble was a really big plan for us that game. And we just kept doing it. We stuck to the game plan. Got time for a couple more questions. We're gonna go to the right. Christina Long from the Southwest Times Record. Jalen and Trey, what was the post-game celebration like, and who was the first person you ran to, and and what was the locker room like? Shoot, I don't even remember. <laughs> I was just excited. I was excited that we won, um, getting back to where we were, and in, in the locker room it was fun. Of course, we got the water bottles, went crazy. We uh, got on live, just had fun with our team, started dancing and everything. But of course, it's fun to win, and and it's a great feeling. Trey, anything else? Uh, First person I ran to was Kate. Uh, <laughs> Kate is my dog. Like he know how bad I want to play well. So you know, you know, when I, he was probably the happiest person for me. So that was the first person I ran to. And then, coach, have you had a chance to see your mom yet post game? Yeah, I, gave, I went and gave her a hug. She th she gave me a uh, a Buckeye from Ohio that my dad used to hold. Uh, she gave it to me pregame, so I'm sure she's gonna get give the credit to herself for for that lucky Buckeye she's held for <laughs> 60 years or whatever. We'll go next to the left. Uh, Jalen, when Adam Spencer, uh, SDS, when you saw that last play, the pass to uh, Stanley there, you know, what went through your head when you saw that going in? And then you mentioned uh, players doing their roles and the new guys uh, taking on. So what did it mean to, to you to see Chris Likes, you know, in that late game situation, step in and hit two clutch free throws like that? Yeah, I talked to Adis when we got in the locker room, and I saw him the whole time. Me and him, I don't think I looked at anybody else. He was wide open. I just waited for a guy to clear, and I threw it to him, and he did his thing. But then Chris, like, he, he's accepted his role. He's been a great player for us this whatever, how long it's been. He's accepted everything. He's been a great leader for this team. And, and when he steps in at the end of the game, we're all confident and hit those free throws. And he just gets in, comes in. He's a confident player, and we're just as confident as he is. Last question from Janie. Hi, guys. Janie McCauley from AP. Um, Trey, how much did JD set the tone early with a block, a steal? And then the second half, um, he you know sneaks behind Timmy and gets that, that steal when, when Jalen's defending Timmy. I mean, just those little hustle plays you guys all made. Yeah, yeah. He was being aggressive all night, defensive end and offensive end. They were big. Um, it kept the momentum my way. And you know we just kept running the floor and making plays. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. <laughs>